Well, hello there and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about a director's loan account. Now, over on the Boffix YouTube channel, we spoke about the director's loan account in more of a theory-based approach, explaining what it is, how it works, and everything else in between. Well, today we're going to look at that same information, but we're going to look at it in a much more practical way. And we're going to be concentrating on how it works in QuickBooks Online. So if you're an owner of a limited company or thinking about becoming an owner of a limited company, then this is definitely a video not to miss. This is a video all about the director's loan account, how to set it up, what it means, and how to get your head around everything in between. Remember from that previous video, there is some really adverse tax consequences if you get the director's loan account wrong. So trust me, this video is one not to be missed. My name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of account here at Boffix. Now, today's video is all about making sure that you are covered when it comes to QuickBooks Online and the director's loan account, making sure that you're doing things right to ensure that you don't get those nasty adverse tax consequences that we don't want to appear for anyone. So without further ado, let's go straight into QuickBooks Online. And let's talk about exactly how we would set up a director's loan account. Okay, so the director's loan account, where is it? Well, you do have many options. And if I was to go down into my chart of accounts and was gonna start creating a brand new account and was gonna call it a director's loan account, I do have a few options that you have. Now, ideally, or if you're gonna go down the purest route, it's gonna be current liability or current asset depending if it's an overdrawn direct loan, loan account or a not an overdrawn direct loan account, but more on that later. And in both of them, you do have the ability to be able to put them as current liability. You do have the option to do what's called a non-current liability, and you could go in and you could put it under the shareholder elements from there. But what I would highly recommend everyone does now, from a purist point of view, this is not exactly how you would show it in your statutory account, but remember, QuickBooks Online is all about your management accounts, not your statutory accounts. But if you were going to be putting it in there, my highest recommendation is to use a cash at bank in hand. From there, all you need to do is change the name and you could call it a director's loan account. Save and close. Now, the reason we would do it this way and not have it as a other debtor or a creditor or anything like that is because you get so much more functionality out of it. Being a director's loan account means, first of all, it appears on this right-hand side here. So, as an example, there's my director's loan account or drawing account if you're a sole trader, and that sits just there. That means I can keep an eye on it, so every time I sign into QuickBooks, I can see that account there, making it really easy for me. And if I wanted to make a payment from my director's loan account, then when I go to an expense, I get the opportunity as a payment account to drop that as a director's loan account, effectively saying that I've paid for this personally and not the business. Furthermore, if I was to have a supplier that needed paying, so imagine that I've got this supplier here that I need to make a payment for. If again, if I paid for this personally, all I need to do is drop this down, say I paid it on my director's loan account, make sure the date's correct, save and close, and that payment's been made for me. So what does this balance represent then? Well, from here, you can see at the moment, I've got 4,127 pound and 42 P. But what does that mean? Well, that figure represents in this case, because it's not overdrawn, because it's money that is actually owed to me as the director, this represents how much money I can take out of the business without having to worry about tax consequences along with it. If I look into it by clicking into it, looking into it a little bit deeper, you can see what sort of transactions have got us to that position. So for example, there's that 2,700 we just paid off. Well, that's classed as a payment from my director's loan account, increasing the amount that I have available to draw against. 
But when I actually take money out of the business, and I'm going to do it again here, so you can see that I'm going to go and say actually. So if I need to take money out of my business bank account and into my direct -to loan account, effectively saying that I want to take money out of my business and pass it over to me myself. So I'm transferring from the business bank to the direct -to loan account there then this balance here, you can expect to go down because I'm using some of that allowance. I'm taking some of that money out of my business. So if I'm going to be taking £3,000, save and close, then you can see then with that £3,000 taken out, I'm now down to only £1,127.42p. What else is it hitting here though? Every time you see a money appearing in the deposit section, the right hand side, well, that's money I've taken out. This is me reducing the amount of direct loan account. On the other side though, I've got items that are increasing that. So here we have £750. That's brilliant. That's my salary. So instead of me taking that salary individually, I'm now actually going to be utilising this and I'm going to be putting it in here on a regular basis. So each and every month, I should see this figure here. So as I scroll through, you'll be able to see that that appears on a regular time. Also, anything else that I've actually paid? So here's my mileage deductions here. This is me having a mileage claim against me. Well, that's going to go in my favour. This is going to increase the amount of money that is available for me to draw. And as we said in that last video, it's actually in a really good position if you're owed money from your business, because basically that's money that has no tax consequences related to it whatsoever. And it means that you can draw against that, no problem. So at this point in time, I can draw against the £1,127.42. Again, this is why having it as a cash account and having it on this main account here makes it so much easier for me because I can see these figures. I can see what's making up these figures. I can go through and reconcile that if I want to, to make sure I'm happy with the numbers that are there. Now, once I've gone through those numbers and I'm happy that everything's there as, as it needs to be and everything's in, in the right place, then it's up to me, it's up to my opportunity then to keep an eye on those figures so it goes forward. Because if we're in a position where actually I needed to take some more money out for whatever reason, so I've gone back to my business can, I've gone to take out another, say, 2,500, then at that point, I'm now overdrawn. That means that there is potential for me to have some adverse tax consequences. Again, go back to the video on the Boffix channel to understand exactly what those adverse tax consequences could be and how they can affect you and your business. Well, we want to avoid that. And the only way for us to avoid it is we always want to be seeing this as in a good state. What that gives me an opportunity to do is maybe raise some more dividends, maybe have more salary that's taken out, or I need to inject more money back into my business. If I do any of those options there, that's going to increase the amount of money that is owed to me, making sure that this figure goes back from actually overdrawn, which is the case here, to actually not overdrawn. Now, when it comes to raising dividends, we've done a whole video on how to raise dividends in QuickBooks Online, or at least to make sure that you've got enough reserves to go there. But if I did have the reserves to put in and I was able to, then I could use my journal entry. I could go in and I could put my dividends in place. And imagine we've come to the conclusion that we can raise ourselves £5,000 worth of dividends. I would use my attachment box and I'd attach my minutes and also my dividend vouchers and I would go against my director's account, loan account raising those dividends as needed. What that's done is that's given me a big buffer now. So now I'm well in credit and it means that my director's loan account is nice and healthy which means my director's loan account is nice and healthy and avoiding those nasty tax charges. So as you can see on QuickBooks Online creating your director's loan account as another bank account means that it's easy to be able to track what's going on in real time. It means that if a transaction's happening in the bank account, you can transfer it to your director's loan account if you need to. It means that you can pay off transactions as we've seen before. And it also means that you can interact with your director's loan account much easier than before. And more importantly, I think, is the fact that you can see that director's loan account easily and be able to make sure that you take ownership for it every time you log in. And that's what this is all about, making sure that you have that ownership, you understand what's going on with your direct loan account and no nasty surprises later down the line.
And that's it. That's the director's loan account in QuickBooks Online. Hopefully you can see that actually it's really straightforward and it's just part and parcel of the normal skills that you've probably learned to date from QuickBooks Online. Just taking it that little bit step further, bringing it into a concept you may not be 100% familiar with already. But as you can see, when you see the transactions and how they go and how they form part of your financial statements, you'll be able to appreciate and understand what's going on. And that means at the end of the year, when you see your director's loan account, hopefully you'll see that you're not shocked or surprised that it's actually overdrawn or it's in an adverse tax. Let me know below, how do you deal with your director's loan account? Are you using the cash bank regime? I know from an accounting purist point of view, it definitely shouldn't be a cash account. But at the end of the day, the principle of what it is, is a cash account. The director's loan account is a bank account as such within your business. That is a bank account relating to you. And that's how we, we should be dealing with it. And also remember from accounts point of view, your QuickBooks account isn't what's going to get submitted to company's house. Your QuickBooks account are your management accounts. And it's in your statutory accounts where you need to make sure those direct loan accounts are put in the right place. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed, that has been useful to you. Don't forget, if you like videos like this and you found this useful, don't forget to like, subscribe. Head over to the Boffick YouTube channel as well if you want to get some more insights into what's going on there. Because what we talk about there is the more practical and theory side of it as well. And also giving you some tips and tricks along the way. My name has been Aaron Patrick. As always, it's been a pleasure to do this video for you. I'm looking forward already to the next one, and I'll see you then. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks Chat, Boffick's Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.